What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Ugly Art Shop. Today we have a very special guest for the first time ever joining me here at the beautiful Taberna Costera in downtown Las Vegas. Jazz Margarita, what's going on? Hi, happy Sunday, beautiful April to you. And I'm just enjoying the moment that we have right now. Um, and there's a lot going on in the world, and I am really grateful to be in my community and nowhere else. And yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. Today we're here to talk about your brand new release, Love Lost, Love Found. <laughs> Just released this past Thursday. I'm very fortunate to have my very own copy of this. Uh, it's very inspiring. It opens up a lot of things uh, going in through my mind. So tell us, what inspired you to write this in the first place? You know, thinking about the title, one, it's a little dramatic, but two, <laughs> it's uh, also someone else already took the name, right? But this is not like copyright, doesn't have an ISBN, but this is truly my journey about understanding love, inc including the romantic, the familial, the friendship, the platonic, but the self, the self-love and understanding that everything's a journey and there's some days that I think about the words that I wrote when I was 25 and now that I'm 27 and I published it I still feel I still feel like the same situations arise with different people different fonts but I I'm different now and I laugh about it with my therapist I wanted to this is a chronological book I mean I might write another one when I'm 50 because I like the numerology the 25 to 25 I might go the Adele route and do a 25 year old and then a 30 year old book um, and just whatever inspires me to write or I, this might be the only volume ever but I think that this laid the foundation for how I feel and how I navigate the world and it um, it encompasses a lot of my journeys, including my sexual orientation, my gender identity, the roles that I have in my community with my family as a good daughter, a good friend, a good sibling. And I really tried to be as honest in the editing process of what I picked to be part of the book and what I didn't need to be part of the book, because at some point, you know, when you do get burned by romantic love, it's like at some point you just have to cut it off. At some point, you, you just got to continue to move on and make sure that it doesn't take up too much space in your heart. But it, what I did feel was true and it had to do with a lot of different people. And so um, it's raw, it's honest. And I don't think poetry is supposed to be something that you have to look up in the dictionary every single word or I think vocabulary is great but for me I just wanted it to be simple right I've learned from very early on in my organizing career that if you want to teach somebody something that it has to be teachable to a second grader like they have to be able to understand it and that way it resonates um, from being a child to being an elder and we all have these universal experiences of love we're all gonna lose love we're all gonna find love we're all gonna fight for love or we're all going to be scared of love. I mean, so that's my journey. And this is just the published piece of that era and who I continue to be. What do you think was perhaps the biggest challenge in putting this together? I fight a lot with my perception. And I think that my labor is inherent in this because I write anyway whether I publish this or not this still exists in my notes app it still exists in my google docs I printed it out so it was the bravery and choosing to actually go forth with, with printing it and shout out to Avent Pop who helped me sugar um, walked me through the editing process had me sit down and understand about margins and spacing and sizing and so even the poetry book itself is not like a traditional poetry book like there's words and phrases upside down 90 degrees and it's supposed to kind of you're supposed to kind of pick up something but then come back to it and maybe pick up something else later depending on where you are in your journey or uh what resonates for you because when I was doing the editing process I'm like this resonated with me but it doesn't 
anymore. But I decided to put it in anyway because I don't know if it it will impact. I don't know if it will give someone that relief that they're searching for. And when we did the poetry book release the other day on my birthday, right, one of my friends who I've known since like 2020 or 2021, she was, she was crying. Like she really needed the first poem in relation to her immigrant mother. Or sorry, not immigrant mother, um, but to her mother. And uh, my first poem in the book is about my mother because she is my foundation she is my center the way that I knew how to socialize and navigate as a woman is because of her and it's not a traditional sense she's always been the black sheep of her family of that she didn't want to be tied down to a man she wanted to be independent and she is independent and has been for pretty pretty much my whole life never taught me or my sister that we had to fulfill fulfill a familial obligation to have children right that should always be autonomous and a choice and so um i do owe a lot to her and i'm glad that what i picked ended up being what was truest to myself and that was the labor that was the bravery that was the courage i'm glad you bring that up because i remember when you released it a lot of a lot of thoughts were going through my mind because i had to think to myself super way everything i do like who am i what am i because a lot of people know me just a dude behind the camera, or in this case, in front of the camera. But like, so take all that away. Who am I for real? So that's that's what had me thinking the whole time. No, I mean that's the thing about poetry. You, um, with that said, what's the one thing you want people to get out of this when they read it? Authenticity. Whoever it is you want to be in the world, whoever you are, deserves inherently by if you believe in god by god's design by god's will to be loved to be celebrated to be held space for and i understand now later after my prefrontal cortex developed and my emotional responses developed that whatever i feel instinctively is often my intuition and I need to follow that intuition. And I think that we do such a disservice to ourselves when we only think as uh, femmes, as women being born with intuition, everyone has intuition, but some of us, we're just taught like, Oh, well, no, I don't want to become a problem. I don't want to get someone angry. I don't want to have anyone uncomfortable. Life is uncomfortable. Life is uncomfortable. Life requires you to be vulnerable but i think when we are so closed up or we are so used to not being angry or not being sad or not being just who we are in the moment because it changes from moment to moment and the line that i write uh very early on so this was very early in that year of my 25th year is that every cell Our cellular system changes every seven years completely. All of our cells are replaced in our body. So how can we expect ourselves to be the same? How can we expect ourselves to love the same? How can we expect ourselves to look in the mirror? I don't want to look in seven years. I'm 27 now, 34, and be like, I'm the same exact person that I was. No, I want to be better. I want to be, and I'm already good now. So I think celebrating that and then... If we're looking at the mirror and we're listing all of the things we love, how long does it take for us to say you? We love you. We love ourselves. We love the person that we're being, right? So, um, yeah, authenticity is, I hope they feel that because there is rage in there. There is fire in there. There is sadness. There is deep trauma, but there's also deep love and deep joy and deep celebration of all of my eras of myself and while I have you here today, I would like to know if you could read us something from from this right here. Pick out anything you like, you know, something that uh, think something we could we could all get something out of. It's the second to last poem. It's titled Obedience to Purpose and Healing is Someone Else's Deliverance. At twenty five, went sober from alcohol, cut off all of my hair. To love the boy they said I looked like when I was five. First surgery, first suicide attempt. Built a garden bed, fell in love, 
hard. And I knew he was hurt before, so I showed him unconditional love until it was at the expense of me and my needs. I learned my daddy issues from when I was 12 are still reaching the same conclusions. I don't want your money, your gifts. I don't want your judgment. I want you to hold me. I drove past the path I walked when I was lost, searching for an, out, an answer I didn't have inside, reckless abandoned, only to find that at 25, anxiety sees me as no such master because I refuse to let it make a home out of me. Temporary stays only, information gathering only. Anxiety stems from my own perception of myself using other people's eyes. Stems from not speaking my peace about other people's actions, harm, and weapons formed against me. I know, I know deeply now, I dishonor myself when I don't speak up. And so I expel this energy trapped in my body. I've objectified anxiety. So yeah, I don't actually give a fuck. Why are you surprised when I say what's on my mind? Used to everyone else's comfort, obedience, and people-pleasing? I'm surrounded by love. I am love. Your absence does not hinder me. If you have to deeply question whether or not to show up for me, don't. I'll make it easy for you. If you feel ownership over me in any sense of the way, show me the papers. I'm an Aries, babe. Come correct. Come as you are, but don't stay as you are. And when I wrote this, it was actually on my birthday turning 26 last year. This was a, the wrap-up the wrap of it, of that year. And it's funny that the title has obedience and then the poem has obedience as well because I wrote the poem and then I wrote the titles a few weeks ago. So I think obedience can be really nasty and can be really toxic and can be really nasty, 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 nasty in the sense that you're playing a role or you have to be which way and you don't have your autonomy and you're not free. And so at the same time, if you have obedience and discipline to loving yourself, that is, that can be your purpose and that can be your healing and it will show someone else the way. And my obedience to myself was curing my anxiety, was curing my perception of other people and just becoming who I am now is just a person, right? Just a person who wants to exist in the world and knows that I don't want to cause harm to others, but I'm also a sacred person and I won't let anyone cast a shadow on my light either because that's sacred. A lot of verbal gems being thrown out here today. Now for those who want to follow your journey and they want to see what you're all about, where can they find you? Where can they find a copy of this? Thank you so much for having me, friends. Um, it's really great, and it's a beautiful day. And it's 414 as well, too. That's important to me because I had my quinceanera in 20, 2011. When I was 15, I'm 27 now, so 12 years ago. Um, and you can find me out in the community personally. I mean, I hope that someone runs across this book and says, I've read this piece or I listened to this interview and you can reach out literally to Marco and uh, find me as well too. But my at is Palabra y Cuerpo and I exist in the community as many things. So my content is not only my poetry, it's not only my thoughts, but it's also the things that I'm showing up for. It's my spirituality and I want to be in community with people on that page specifically. Like I've only really followed folks that I'm interested in their growth. I'm invested in supporting them and my regular personal handle that I've had for over 10 years now is jazz margarita where I kind of post other things, but palabra y cuerpo is where I am trying to find my most authentic self there. And you can reach out for the digital copy. That's free. If you want a physical copy, you can DM me and we'll arrange either a pickup or a shipping. And thank you so much for supporting me and for healing and loving and being and becoming. Awesome, Jazz. Thank you very much for joining me here at the beautiful Tabana Costera. Shout out to the people here. Um, it's just a great Sunday all around. Glad to be around. Glad to have you. Um, I hope to we, one day we can work together on some kind of a project. You know, I see you're always out in the community. I'm out in the community doing things as well. We got to collab one day. Yes doing a lot of positive things for the city. So we'll tell you guys next time. Thank you so much, Jess.